This is the Retirement Key Podcast with Pat Volk, financial advisor of Abish Financial Services. And I'm Heather Branch here asking Pat for insight on ways to better prepare for your financial future. The retirementkey.com is where you can go to begin a conversation with Pat and the entire team at Abish Financial Services. We also have links posted in the show notes so you can just click there and be directed to our website. Or again, it's the retirementkey.com. Pat, one of the many amazing things that you have the privilege of experiencing in the work that you do is talking with people, focusing on their retirement dreams, helping them to make those retirement dreams come true. But I imagine if if I were in your shoes, I would constantly be just learning and looking and asking about what do I have to look forward to, right? Like what are people saying that they want to do? What are the lessons that they've learned that you can learn and and apply to your own self? I don't want to make that mistake or I definitely want to do that. Absolutely. It gives you ideas too. That's right. (laughs) You're doing what? I never thought of that. You're taking what vacation? You're buying what? what? Yeah, that's amazing. Amazing. (laughs) Writing it down, adding it to the list. Nothing wrong with cheat codes. (laughs) Right. Hello. We can all think of things that we're looking forward to in the years after we said, for me, it's going to be not having to wake up every single morning to an alarm clock. Um, in retirement, but there was this online thread talking about the things that we like less the older we get. The first one I have some objections to. The first one they're saying we we like social media less. And let me tell you something right now. My mother-in-law, I have never met anybody so obsessed with Facebook in my whole life. <laughs> the woman is addicted. Also, I don't know anybody that likes waiting in long, long lines. No, I don't think that's an age thing. Loud places and noises. Yeah. Driving, I think it depends on the drive. Yeah, I love driving. Because some people love driving. It's also a pleasure ride. Like if you're driving through the Blue Ridge Mountains, that's a very different experience than being stuck in five o'clock traffic. Yeah, but I love driving. And then staying up late <laughs> for me, I love, and I love a good I drive too. I love staying up late I love too. staying up late too, but it, I think it's the idea of staying up late on your own time, right? Like it's staying up yes. late on a Saturday night watching a movie. It's on your own time. And you don't have to get up the next morning, I guess, unless you're going to church. But anyways. Well, that kind of leads into one of the concerns that can come up is, you know, we always talk about having a financial plan, Mm -hmm. which is obviously important. Mm -hmm. How are you going to pay the bills for the rest of your life unless we have one? But I do think you also need a bit of a life plan. Yeah. If your intention is to say, you know, and and please, I don't mean this towards you, but hey, let's not have the alarm clock. I'm just going to sleep in. I'm not really going to have a schedule. I'm mm-hmm. not going to have any activity. That'll get old right. pretty, pretty quick. Right. Uh, and that is also just from a personal you know, standpoint, I wouldn't want that for anyone. Yeah. Uh, that's not a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. That's someone that unfortunately, frankly, that would affect your health. Got it. Uh, but when I do meet individuals that are making retirement a second career. That doesn't mean you need to go out and get yourself a full-time job. Maybe you want to just do something on the side. Maybe you want to start a little hobby, but you do want something that's going to engage you, something that you want to get up in the morning to go and do. It's healthy for your brain and body. Everyone needs it. We need some type of organization, some type of continuity. It's how we function. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Some other things that do come up that I do hear, some folks have to get used to getting used to multiple income streams. Mm. You're going to be getting social security checks. You might be getting a pension check. You might be getting a check from a brokerage account. You might be getting RMDs from your IRAs. You may have very different sources coming in where you're really just used to bringing in one or two paychecks. Right. During your working career. Right. So even the timing of those, making certain that if you're going to be getting a payment on the first of the month, do you want the other ones to be coming in out at that time? Or would you maybe want some secondary payments on the 15th of the month? So even just getting used to income streams, uh, we have heard a lot of folks bring that up saying, geez, you know, it's just getting used to not getting that big paycheck. It's coming from a lot of different sources. Okay, got it. Okay. Yep. And I would say probably leading back into the finances, looking at your budget. Uh, I've always joked around that the budget is the great American myth. People make money, they save, and then they spend. And if there's something left over, well, that's my budget. I'm not going into debt. I shouldn't really have too many problems. I don't think that that's, is that, that's not a budget though. It's not a budget. That's why I call it the great American myth. Okay. Um, if people really need to sit down and go through what is the electric bill? What is the gas bill? Yeah. You know, what are your property taxes? What are these expenses that are not going to go away? Uh, and that very well may increase. And is your lifestyle going to change a little bit? 
if I retire and I'm in still relatively good health, mm -hmm. I may want to travel a lot more. Mm -hmm. I may want to engage in a lot of activities. Yeah. So this is really where you want to start budgeting in what we call the go-go years, yeah. the slow-go years the no-go years. Okay. Let's not just make some assumptions that everything is going to be linear. You know, if you ever look at some of these retirement programs, they show, oh, you're going to be bringing in a distribution of 4%. You're going to make 6%. And it's always just ever gradually increasing. Nobody's life has ever gone in that pattern ever. Okay. People lose jobs. The market does well. The market does poor. This is why you do need to spend a little time concentrating on the plan. What is it that you want to accomplish? Where are the dollars? Where are the income sources? I wouldn't want somebody having the second career sitting in front of the TV watching CNBC. Right. I don't find that right. you know, to each their own. But I don't feel that most people want to do that. And that's really where we as financial advisors want to take that burden off of you. Let you concentrate on the things that are important. Where do you want to spend your money? Where do you want to go? How long are these dollars going to last? We're going to get you there. We want you to have the plan, though. What is it that you want to do with your life? All right. So continuing this conversation, then I think that that notion of having some awareness, having that budget, having ideas and creating plans for ourselves, whether or not that's working in our retirement years, it, it really just it highlights the overall picture. The overall question that we want to discuss further today is the downsides of retirement that catch people by surprise. So you've already given us a couple of, of these examples. And I think yeah, that's maybe some lighter ones I went through. But yeah. if you really want to get into maybe a, something a little bit of a harder punch, yeah. it's going to be income taxes. OK, that's always the one. They're not going away. Uh, they may actually increase if everybody's looking at the budgetary issues that we have and the amount of debt we have in this country. Mm -hmm. Most people are under the assumption that taxes are going to go up. So we need to make sure that that's part of the cash flow. The taxes have to come from somewhere. Got it. You could also outlive your money. And I'm going to maybe do this one on two sides of the coin. Okay. You could outlive your money. And then there are other situations where health concerns can actually eat into that retirement savings as well. Okay. And maybe we want to look at some estate planning, long-term care planning, making sure the health insurance is set up appropriately. We don't want to be caught there. And then the last one is always going to be most folks have saved money in 401ks, IRAs, deferred vehicles. You're going to be forced to take distributions on that. Currently, the age is 73. Uh -huh. They're moving the requirement age up to 75 in the year 2033. Uh, but that means dollars have to be forced out. They have to have taxes paid. Why not get a bit of a jump on that and start considering some Roth conversions? Maybe pay taxes at a lower rate today rather than just waiting for that, you know, big hit to come when you're in your retirement years. So income taxes, the idea of creating a plan so that we don't outlive our money. And with that, the idea of proper health care, proper health care plan, Correct. and then required distributions is the distribution. That's something that's a big surprise for a lot of people, is it not? It is. It, it, but it really shouldn't be because when everybody started savings, they were told, oh, you're putting this away on a pre-tax basis. You don't pay any taxes that it accumulates. I don't know if everyone forgot that. No, you eventually do have to pay taxes when you take the distribution. So it's either going to pay ordinary income taxes when you reach the minimum distribution age. But the only other way around this would be to maybe donate those distributions to a charity through a qualified charitable distribution mm -hmm. or maybe engage earlier and start converting some of that IRA into a Roth, meaning okay. pay taxes in advance. Just get it over with getting today. ahead of it before 73. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And getting ahead of it before tax rates go up considerably. Right. OK. All right. So. The work that you do at Abish Financial Services then, thinking about these kind of surprises that can pop up. I mean, I have to imagine, this is, this is the big difference, not just creating the financial plans, but this is the big difference between what you do at Abish Financial Services versus what a lot of other financial advisors do is, A, talking to people about life plans, not just financial plans, like what are you retiring yes. to, but two, also working to factor in things that you have to for retirement planning, not just investment and growth and financial planning, like in our working years. So talk about that, how all of these things come together in the plans that you create. 
Yeah, it's actually what I call like a wheel of financial planning. So we don't want to concentrate solely on the investments. I know that's sexy. A lot of people like that. But we do want to talk about life insurance. If yep. you passed away, <laughs> are there dependents out yeah. there? Yeah. Uh, can you use that perhaps as a family bank if you're young enough? What about long-term care? What about having an emergency fund? What about refinancing the mortgage? What about making certain that your estate plan is set up appropriately? Do you have any dependents? Do you have special need children or grandchildren mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. want to set things up for? All of this needs to be discussed. And it's not just what investment is best. It involves taxes. It involves movement of money. It involves gifting strategies. And these are things that take time to set up, but they are very, very critical to set up a proper financial plan and reach retirement success, which yeah. is really what everyone's trying to do. I think that for somebody who's researched this podcast and is listening to you right now, they're like, okay, well, how do I do this then? So what, what do we, you what need do we do? to come in yeah. and meet with someone at Abish Financial. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. want to sit with everyone, yeah. gather your information. Yes. Find out about all those investments, but be very serious with yourself. This isn't a time to be Pollyannish. Uh, this is a time to say, you know, how much have I accumulated? Realistically, how much income can be provided from what I've accumulated? Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be realistic with yourself. Oftentimes I've met folks, they've accumulated a decent amount, but their expectations for the amount of income that it can produce are not necessarily in line with what the market can provide. As Pat was saying, it begins with a conversation that he and the team at Abish Financial, they are ready to have with you as soon as today. You can connect with us right now. Go to the retirementkey.com. There is a contact tab there at the top of the page that you can enter in a little information about yourself and we will be back in touch with you about setting up that appointment. We also have links posted in the show notes so you can just click there or again, find us anytime at theretirementkey.com. Thanks for listening to the Retirement Key Podcast. Be sure to listen to the Retirement Key Radio Show, Saturdays and Sundays on WMAL. Investment advisory services offered through Abish Financial Wealth Management, LLC, number 310633, a registered investment advisor firm. Financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. To find out if Abish Financial Services is licensed in your state, please call 571-577-9968. Abish Financial Services is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Abish Financial Services, Inc., Virginia Insurance License, number 12782. Zero.